G'day, Doug Fraser here again. I just thought I'd share you, with you my idea for what could possibly be a new BSA. Uh, I'm not saying Classic Legends and the Hindra Group should run with V-Twins, but I just tend to think they could be a pretty good way to go. Um, I've looked on the internet and there are quite a few images of what purport to be new BSAs, whether it's a fairly ordinary job of uh, photoshopping or a bit of CGI. I've gone one step further, I've actually built a bike. This is not Photoshop, this is not CGI, this is the real thing. Um, I quite like it. I've now done about um, 6,000 k's on it. I built it to in, in time for the international rally we held here, held here last year in November. Uh, I spent probably just over 18 months working on it to create the entire motorcycle. If there is anything wrong with it or you don't like it, well, fair enough. That's just the way I like motorbikes like this. And if there is a problem, there's only one butt to kick and that's mine. But before we go too much into this, I'll just do a little bit of history with you. How these they could have gone if they stuck in V-Twins. BSA started building V-Twins in 1920 and finished in 1940. By that stage, V-Twins weren't terribly popular. Really, the only new V-Twins of that period were the Harley Knucklehead and the A-Series Vincent. Um, Japs were being phased out, and generally speaking, if you wanted a sporting motorcycle, you went for the new parallel twins, especially after the war. However, if Val Page, who designed the brilliant range of BSA singles that we know ended up as gold stars, uh, had decided to build a V-Twin, I'd like to think he may have come up with something like this. What I've used is two of his uh, Empire star cylinder heads and grafted them onto my own bottom end, my own crank cases and cylinders, then squeezed it all into a period 39 rolling chassis with some small mods. I've extended the wheelbase by a mere four inches and that takes it up to the same wheelbase as a Gold Star, so it is fairly stable at speed. The bike handles well, it goes extremely well. This is a sports bike. Uh, it's good for well over 100 mile an hour and it, go, it accelerates like buggery. It's not a soft engine, but it returns very good economy. I'm still, out of all of the V-Twins, I get well over 50 to the gallon, and combined with substantial, uh, substantially good performance. This is what I thought they could do before the war. Jump to post-war period, I've come up with what I term the B66, which is basically two B33s, stuffed onto the same, basically bottom end as the M46, and grafted into a replica of my Gold Star chassis. I've added a few extras to this in the respect that it runs a twin disc Rob North style front end, a five speed gearbox electric start. It's a more refined version. I think this bike could have actually been quite saleable up until the late 70s, when by that stage it was probably deemed uh, a little old fashioned. When Alan Cathcart wrote it, he described it as a 70s superbike, and this one really does go like a superbike. So, to my way of thinking, what would BSA do if they were still in business? And they are back in business now, but I haven't seen what they're going to release and I am looking forward to it. So I thought I'd go one step further and build what I term the modern BSA. Now, it doesn't really look a great deal like a traditional BSA, but it came from the si same oh, rather strange mind that developed the first two. Anyway, this is what I call the E120. This is the road version and most of the development work was done with the racer over here. I had that run running in about after from a clean sheet of paper to a running motorcycle in about 14 months. It wasn't completely sorted and it had taken me a little while to get the bugs out of it. Once I got the bugs out of it I was able to build this new one. Although they share common crankcases that's about it. It's a totally different frame. Uh, this one has a five speed box whereas the racer has a six speed box. It's a a traditional sit-up comfortable motorcycle. I didn't want a sports bike on the road. I wanted something that was yeah, comfortable and traditionally styled and this is what I've come up with. Like I say, it's probably not everyone's cup of tea. Um, it's just my concept of what I think BSA could do, the new BSA could do with the V-Twin range. Anyway, um, I'll start her up, you can hear it. Like I say, I've done nearly 7,000 k's on it and it's working out, it's working very well. It doesn't have a great deal of electronics on it. I'm not that fussed with having electronic control for absolutely everything. It's running carvies and points. 
as I can set those up. It's returning over 50 of the gallon, so it's not too far off the mark as far as economy goes. It, it has the niceties of heated, heated hand grips, 12 volt auxiliary power socket, a centre stand, a tyre pump, and many other little features that I think are necessary for a modern motorcycle, but don't always have them. It doesn't run a balance shaft, and it runs no form of traction control, and it doesn't need it. The bike is smooth, really smooth. It's a 75 degree V-twin, and uh, it doesn't have any nasty vibration characteristics at all. I put that down to basically a heavy crankshaft, which makes, makes it very flexible and easy to ride. Not peaky, just pulls well. Anyway, that's my idea for a new V-twin, BSA perhaps, who knows. I just hope uh, Classic Legends Mahindra can come up with something uh, fairly soon and get the name back into production. Thank you.